Today we are going to see second part of the chapter Two Stories About Flying The Black Aeroplane written by Frederick Forsyth from class 10 English NCRT This chapter helps us to teach not to lose hope in difficult situation no matter how hard the time is if you are confident and have positive attitude you can easily come out of the situation hello everyone you are watching the tutor if you haven't subscribed the channel yet make sure to subscribe it okay now let's begin with the chapter the black aeroplane the moon was coming up in the east behind me and stars were shining in the clear sky above me there wasn't a cloud in the sky i was happy to be alone high up above the sleeping countryside I was flying my old Dakota aeroplane over France back to England. I was dreaming of my holiday and looking forward to being with my family. I looked at my watch 1.30 in the morning. Okay. So now here the narrator is a pilot and he is sharing his experience once he was stuck in a difficult situation. So he is sharing that experience with us in this chapter what he's saying the moon was coming up in the east he's describing uh, he's uh, talking about the uh, situation how the situation was the, the moon was coming up in the east and stars were shining in the clear sky and there wasn't a cloud when uh, when a pilot flies a flight uh, he when when he uh, flies a plane the sky should be clear then it will be easy to fly if there are dark clouds it is difficult for pilot to uh, take the plane from that place so now what the pilot is saying here the, the moon was visible stars were shining there were no dark clouds and he was very happy to fly the uh, flight okay and what was the name of his uh, flight Dakota aeroplane the name of his plane was Dakota aeroplane and he was uh, where he was going he was going to England from France he was going to England and what he was dreaming he was dreaming of his holiday that when I will reach London when I will reach England I will be with my family so he was happy very happy to meet his family in England I looked at my watch 1.30 in the morning. So what time it was? 1.30 a.m. I should call Paris control soon, I thought. As I looked down past the nose of the airplane, I saw the lights of a big city in front of me. I switched on the radio and said, Paris control, Dakota DS 0088 here. Can you hear me? I am on way to England over. So when he... Uh, uh, took off the plane he thought now I have to inform the control room Paris control room that I have uh, taken off the plane from here so what he did he switched on the radio and he said Paris control Dakota DS 088 here he said like this can you hear me I am on my way to England I am moving to England now then the voice from the radio answered me immediately. Now when he gave a message, he got the reply immediately. DS-088, I can hear you. You ought to turn 12 degrees west now. Okay, so when he uh, put the message that I am leaving to England, he also got a reply from the control room that, that yes, I can hear you. Now what you have to do, you have to turn 12 degrees west now means they were uh, telling him to take a turn from there they were giving direction to him I checked the map and the compass what is compass compass uh, compass is a device which shows the direction in which direction the plane has to be taken so that is a compass he checked the map and the compass, switched over to my second and last fuel tank and turned the Dakota 12 degrees west towards England. So he um, 
he turned his dakota towards the west because it was the instruction given by the control room so he did that he also checked his last fuel tank okay that was the last fuel tank all other tanks were over i'll be in time for breakfast i thought a good big english breakfast everything was going well it was an easy flight till now everything was going perfect okay he informed the control room and he also got a reply from there that you have to take this direction uh, he he took that direction also and now he was uh, flying the uh, plane very smoothly it was an easy a uh, journey till now everything was going good and he was also imagining that when i will reach my home i will have an english breakfast now what things are included in english uh, in english breakfast um it includes eggs and tomatoes toast tea coffee meat so these things comes in english breakfast so he was imagining that when i will reach my home uh, that is uh, to london I will have English breakfast with my family members. Paris was about 150 km behind me when I saw the clouds. Storm clouds, they were huge. They looked like black mountains standing in front of me across the sky. I knew I could not fly up and over them and I did not have enough fuel to fly around them to the north or south. See, till now he was happy and everything was going smooth but now what happened when he moved the airplane 150 km the journey till 150 km was good but now after 150 km was passed from the paris what he is seeing he saw dark clouds storms in front of him and how the dark clouds are looking it is looking like black mountains huge black mountains uh and now he was in confusion that how to move in this dark clouds he is having very less fuel to go back to paris again or to turn towards north or south he need lot of uh, fuel in his tank but his fuel is also getting empty he is having very less fuel in his last tank and in front of him there are dark clouds he can't enter the clouds so it is very difficult for him to decide what to do whether to go back or to enter the cloud i ought to go back to paris i thought but i wanted to get home i wanted that breakfast i'll take the risk i thought and flew that old dakota straight into the storm now for a while he thought what to do now i have to move forward inside the cloud or i have to go back if i go back i don't have fuel i don't have enough fuel to again reach the paris and uh, towards the north and south also i can't go i don't have enough fuel and if i enter the clouds i don't know what will happen so uh, but he took the courage to take the risk what risk to enter inside the storm inside the clouds everything was suddenly black it was impossible to see anything outside the aeroplane so when he entered inside the clouds uh, dark clouds uh, it was just impossible for him to see outside because everywhere it was just dark he could not see the way okay the old aeroplane jumped and twisted in the air so now the airplane lost its control it was twisting and turning inside the uh, cloud i looked at the compass now he was trying to take help from the compass to see uh, which direction i have to move i couldn't believe i couldn't believe my eyes the compass was turning round and round and round it was dead it would not work the other instruments were suddenly dead too i tried the radio now when he tried uh, to use the compass to see which direction he has to move uh, for to his surprise he saw that the compass is dead it is just moving round and round and round and it is not showing clear direction and uh, and also the other instruments uh, that he was having that also was dead so he did not get help from anywhere then he thought to connect to the control room 
Paris control, Paris control. Can you hear me? There was no answer. The radio was dead too. So now the control, uh, now he could not reach to the control room also. The connection was dead. I had no radio, no compass. I had no radio, no compass. And I could not see where I was. I lost in the storm. Then in the black clouds, quite near me, I saw another airplane. Okay. So when he tried to call the Paris control room, that was also lost. That connection was also lost. Now all of a sudden, what he saw? He saw another airplane in front of him. In the dark clouds, he saw another airplane. It had no lights, no wings. And but I could see it flying next to me through the storm. I could see the pilot's face turn towards me. I was very glad to see another person. He lifted one hand and waved. See when he uh, when he lost all the uh, instruments, he lost all the connection, and um, from wherever he could get help, he lost everything. But he did not lose hope. He did not panic at that time. Okay, he was having confidence in himself that some uh, somehow I will manage to come out of this situation. So at the same time, he saw a black airplane which is just next to him, in front of him, and that plane is leading this pilot. Okay, and he could also see the pilot sitting on that airplane. He is lifting his hand and waving him so that he could see and follow him okay means he got a help from another plane that was a strange plane but it was helping this pilot follow me he was saying follow me he knows that i am lost i thought he is trying to help me now what this pilot thought that uh, uh, maybe that another uh, airplane has come to help me because i am stuck in this storm so that airplane has come uh, come here to help me I have to follow him. He turned his airplane slowly to the north in front of my Dakota so that it would be easier for me to follow him. I was very happy to go behind this strange airplane like an obedient child. See, when you are stuck in a difficult situation, when you are getting no help from anywhere and at that time if you get even a hint, a small help if you get, it means a lot. Yes, in difficult times, if you get even a small help from anyone, even from a stranger, it means a lot. So here also, pilot is stuck in the difficult situation. He don't know what to do. Uh, all the directions are closed for him. So at the same time, he got help from a stranger from another plane. He is guiding this pilot. So what he, uh, so what he thought, let me follow him like an obedient child. I'll follow that airplane now. After half an hour, the strange black aeroplane was still there in front of me in the clouds. So, for half an hour, the flight, the plane, it was moving in the dark clouds. It w Okay. Then, now, there was only enough fuel in the old Dakota's last tank to fly for 5 or 10 minutes more. I was starting, I was starting to feel frightened again. See. Uh, oh, yeah, in this uh, plane, in which uh, this pilot, uh, he uh, he was moving the plane. He was stuck in the clouds. Uh, first of all, he was having last tank, uh, okay, which was running the plane. And now that last tank, that is also getting empty. Only he is having 5 to 10 minutes. Hardly 5 to 10 minutes he can fly the plane. Or else he will land uh, by crashing here and there. So now he was afraid that how will I take the uh, plane forward now because my fuel is empty. But then he started to go down and I followed through the storm. Then at the same time what happened? The black plane which was in front of him, which was leading him, it went uh, to go downwards. Okay, It was going down. And this pilot, he also followed him. Suddenly, I came out of the clouds and saw two long straight lights, lines of light in front of me. It was a runway, an airport. I was safe. Now, this pilot, he, uh, he landed on an airport. He landed on an airport and he was safe now. So, before his fuel was emptied, he landed, us, uh, he landed on airport.
I turned to look for my friend in the black airplane, but the sky was empty. There was nothing there. The black airplane was gone. I could not see it anywhere. So by the time he came down, by the time he landed his uh, plane, he thought to go and uh, thank the other pilot who has helped me through this situation. He thought to go and thank him. But to his surprise, he could not see any airplane. Okay. I landed and was not sorry to walk away from the old Dakota near the control tower. I went and asked a woman in the control center where I was and who the other pilot was. I wanted to say thank you. So this pilot, he landed his plane and went to the near control tower and he went to ask that who is that other pilot who guided me. I want to thank him. She looked at me very strangely and then laughed. Now, the, the uh, a lady, she was sitting in the control uh, room. She laughed at the pilot and said that uh, there was nobody else except you. Let's see what she's saying. Another airplane up there in the storm. No other airplanes were flying tonight. Yours was the only one I could see on the radar. Okay, now what she is saying? She is saying that there was no other plane flying tonight. It was only your plane that was flying and it was stuck. So, about whom you are asking? About which pilot, pilot you are asking? I don't know. So, she was laughing for that. So, who helped me to arrive there safely without a compass or a radio and without any more fuel in my tanks? Who was the pilot on the strange black airplane flying in the storm without lights? Okay, now here he is thinking that if nobody helped me, if there was no plane, if there was no pilot, then who uh, was leading me? Who was guiding me? Uh, how I reached the airport? How I reached the airport safely? What was that? Now a lot of question is coming in his mind that what it was then. When, when there was nobody over there, then who was that? What was that? Okay. So, it was nothing but his confidence because he did not panic in those difficult times and uh, he did not crash his plane here and there. That was his confidence that helped him to uh, reach the airport safely. Okay. So, this chapter teaches us to have hope. And also not to panic in difficult times. If you keep your mind calm, then one or the other solution will come out. Okay. I hope you have understood this story. And if you want more such explanation of other chapter, then do hit the like button, share and subscribe the channel.